This episode was recorded in front of a live audience where viewers voted for the ingredients. It has been edited down from its original runtime. But big, big hearts. Big hearts. Okay, so let's get into it. Oh, man. What we have is three boxes, each with an ingredient, acid, tannin, and fermentable sugar. And these are kind of the building blocks of creating a brew. Our YouTube members and patrons voted that we we're going to make a hooch on today's episode. And for those of you who don't know, a hooch is uh, kind of a sh just a sugar wash. It can be made with a little bit of anything. It is an alcohol. You can make it with candy, Kool-Aid, Tang, Capri Suns has been done on, on our Discord recently. We're going to start here. I'm going to empty this box out and we'll talk about each of these ingredients. And then while y'all are debating which one we're going to go with, I'll get a straw poll set up. Does anyone want to be my designated straw poll person? That might be easier. So in this box are four different potential fermentable sugars that we can use. Okay, Rob's going to be our straw poll guy. So once we are done talking about these ingredients, Rob will drop a straw poll for us in the chat so you can go and vote. So if we were making a wine, this would have fruit juices. If we were making a beer, it would have malts, grains, etc. in it. If we were making mead, this would contain a variety of honeys. So we are making hooch. We've got granulated white sugar. Granulated sugar ferments fairly well. It does uh, obviously need some nutrient. Uh, yeast require a certain level of, of nitrogen as well as amino acids and fats in order to do their synthesis work, in order to procreate and in order to consume sugars and convert them into both alcohols and carbon dioxides. And so we'll have to add some nutrient if we go pretty much any of the routes that are in here. So next up, we've got rice syrup. Rice syrup, as I understand it, has a lower glycemic index than granulated table sugar, and it's preferred for those who are working to quit sugar. And this is a little less than a pound of fermentable sugars in here. Lotus for Life says I like to add acid and bring the sugar to a boil. That is a great way of doing what's called inverting the sugar, which breaks down the complex sugar molecule into easier to digest sugar molecules for the yeast. It requires acid and heat in order to execute that process. And there is a video short about that on our YouTube channel. It's like 30 seconds long and it's animated. This is my first time ever trying rice syrup, and it tastes a little bit butterscotchy and a little bit like honey. So that makes sense because I think I've seen that uh, rice syrup is often used to cut honey uh, in the manufacture of semi-counterfeit honey. That's an interesting choice. That could bring some interesting flavor. Next up on our list is brown sugar. This is dark brown sugar. I prefer dark brown sugar to light brown sugar. I think it's got a better flavor. I think it's richer. I like those molassesy notes that it brings to the table. And so I typically use dark brown sugar in my cooking and baking. And lastly, we have a, a bit of a <laughs> unusual option. We've got what I, I believe y'all were calling last night granny candies. Some of them are still stuck to our box here. Do y'all remember these? This little, here, I'll bring one up. It is having such trouble focusing. So yeah, these are those little, they're like strawberry flavored and they're filled with a, with a goop, with an ooze. It's also quite sugary. So these are our options. Personally, I like the idea of going with the rice syrup because I've never brewed with it before. And uh, in the spirit, I mean, I guess it would technically be like a wine, but in the spirit of hooch, I love the idea of, of exploring that flavor profile. If you, if you choose the granny candy, we're gonna have to put a lot of 
additional consideration into what we're going to do with our acid and tannin balance. Has anyone tried rice syrup? Am I the only one? It's got an interesting flavor. I'm not opposed to that kind of butterscotchy, molassesy flavor that it brings to the table. Reptex Suit, Grandma's candies are some of your favorite candies. I mean, you do you. They're just so sugary and like the the aroma is such like a like a scratch and sniff strawberry kind of smell to it. It's I had one last night and it, they were fine, but favorite feels a little bit much. Fermented candy is unpredictable. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, yeah. I looked at the ingredients and there didn't seem to be anything too offensive, but it had a lot of ingredients. I'm not gonna lie. There were more things in there than I thought there were gonna be. Yeah, Bruce Lab will, will be on later as our, our guest host. We can maybe like mash these up. I don't know. I've never brewed with candy like this before. I wanted to do a while back, I wanted to do a nerd's brew. Um, just never got around to it. I always forget to go buy the, the leftover Halloween and Christmas candy. And rice syrup wins by a mile. So we are going to ditch these other ingredients. Starting out, now we know what our fermentable sugar is. We know what it tastes like. We have a little bit of an idea of what it's going to taste like when it's fermented. But now we need to figure out how we're going to balance that flavor. We're probably going to want a pop of something in there to complement that neutral, buttery kind of flavor. When we talk about balance, think of it like the legs of a stool. So the, can you all see this? Yeah. So the legs of your stool are acid, tannin, and sugar. And if any one of these things is out of whack, your stool is going to fall over. So say you ferment this to dry and you've got a short leg on one side, your stool is going to tip over if the acid and the tannin are too prominent. Say it's too, too pungent, too sour, it's puckering you up. You might need to add some sugar to level that out so you have a different sensation, a richer mouthfeel, and, and something to kind of play off of that sourness. A lot of folks, whenever they make their first mead, believe they don't like mead because it's fermented dry and they sense it as sour. But as soon as you start to add a little bit of back sweetening, that stool balances back out. Same goes for tannin. If it's thin and kind of watery and you feel like you can taste too much sugar, you might need some tannin to kind of level off that mouth feel. It, it kind of takes all those flavors and, and allows them to pour over the tongue rather than kind of dancing down the tongue. And tannin balance, I believe, is one of the most difficult things to, to balance uh, when it comes to making your home brews. Yeah, sorry, uh, Rex, I don't, this, this is what you paid for. And so that's the interesting thing about building a recipe this way is because with each ingredient, you're going to have to try and balance the next ingredient as a community against what may end up a short leg of your stool. So yeah, Larry, um, how we're gonna update on these brews is we'll, we will build a new brew every week and then we will do some brew chores on the former brews. So you will get to see it develop every week as, as we move forward. One of the ways that a lot of people like to balance acid is with, wait for it, acid. Uh, but that would be too easy, right? To just pull some acid blend or tartaric acid or something like that out of this box. That would, that would, that would make things too easy on you, those who are out there voting for, uh, for what we're gonna do with this recipe build. As analogous as I can get to just adding acid, we've got lemon juice. Sometimes it's fun to balance acid with an adjunct. And so for that, I give you the option of ground sumac. Ground sumac tastes like a little bit peppery, but a lot of bit lemony and citrusy. Yeah, Vendor Labs, it, it could be 
Sumac could be interesting against the rice syrup. I like the idea of that. Third, for acid balance, we've got, I'll bring this up to the camera, orange marmalade. And this has got, um, this does have high fructose corn syrup in it. Orange peel, orange juice concentrate, citric acid, and some natural orange flavor. So this would bring some fermentable sugars to the table also. And obviously it would bring a nice, rich, orangey, pithy kind of flavor that would, would bring some, some bitterness, some tannic value to the table. Yeah, Paula, this would increase the ABV with a little bit of extra sugar. Ooh, it's so gelatinous. Very orangey. It's almost got like a tang kind of flavor. And then, lastly, some folks like to balance with fruit. So we have here a jar of dried cranberries. These are very sour, as cranberries are. Very sweet. They will contribute some fermentable sugars. Contribute fermentable sugars that it's difficult for us to calculate for because they're locked up in the fruit. We use these in a dish. It's actually on the YouTube channel called Autumn in a Bowl. And it is the, uh, the literally the best thing that you can make as a side dish or as a main dish. Uh, these are your acid options. Dried cranberries, marmalade, lemon juice, or sumac. Let's open up the chat for debate and discussion on these. Sumac sounds really exciting, says Dog Stick Fetch. There's some agreement that orange marmalade is in the spirit of a hooch. That's, that's accurate. Ryan, I agree that the orange marmalade might brighten up the rice syrup in a nice way. It does have fruit pectin in it, so we'll have to take that into account. Chatters have voted for rice syrup, oh. which I was surprised by. Mm -hmm. I thought that they would be voting for the strawberry candies. They're practical people, though. They are. Did you hear that? Anna just said y'all are practical. Paul says hi. <laughs> okay, everybody go vote in that straw poll. Thank you again, Rob, for putting that poll up. Mm, I like that cranberries. That's a fun choice. Isn't that a fun choice? It's a weird container. Do I just stick my finger yeah, in? Yeah, stick your finger in. Ugh. Yeah, it's sticky, like honey. Oh, yeah, I like that. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What would you vote for if you were in the in the straw poll? I don't want to. I don't want to sway the results. I've been swaying them. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, that really does taste like like just caramelized sugar, like just like a toffee candy. Yeah, yeah, like a toffee. That's a good point. Um, kind of like a, like a brulee sugar kind mm -hmm. of flavor. Mm -hmm. Bender Labs asks, "Are we voting on yeast, or has that been decided?" That hasn't been decided, but I have a few options available. I might let y'all vote on it. Okay, so I'm gonna take a look at the results, refresh. All right, orange marmalade, it is. So now we need to talk about that other leg of the stool, which is tannin. I'm curious how the chat would describe tannin because everybody seems to have kind of their own vocabulary for describing tannin and how Tannin taste. There's rice syrup all over everything. Tannin is a is a sensation that changes based on quantity. On the low end of the scale, you have a sensation of richness, fullness, or a wholeness. Once you start raising that tannin level, you get into the realm of that mouth sucking, like puckering sensation not a sour puckering sensation but a wicking sensation like the the liquid is being wicked out and that we call astringency and you get that level of astringency with like a long soak on oak or with a really heavy powdered tannin addition or maybe a long rest on the skins if you're doing like a, a fruit mead or a grape wine maybe you're even fermenting on the skins to get some of that astringency and those big deep red wines have that nice astringent pucker and it's not overwhelming. It's almost a little bit of a, a flavor buffer, if you will, that kind of buffers the flavors across the palate. So we need to talk about tannin. These are the folks who decided that today's recipe was gonna be a hooch. We allowed voting for about a week and the options were hooch, a mead, wine, or a beer, and y'all chose 
hooch. So thank you for voting in that. Every week, our members and patrons will be able to vote on what the following week's brew is going to be. There are other ways of adding tannin to a brew, and one that has become increasingly popular is tea. So one of our options today will be black tea. This is a cold brew black tea, so it's pretty chill. You just put in some cold water, give it about five minutes, and it brews right up. Bender says, I have a pound of ginger peach black tea that has gotten a little old. I should use it in a hooch or something. Yeah, you should. And you should talk to Dog Stick Fetch about that because he's like the master of brewing with prepackaged teas. A breakfast hooch. Yeah, maybe I'll get myself a bagel and lox. So other ways of balancing tannin, ones that are accessible to the home brewer are things like oak. This is a light toast American oak. So it's got some vanillins in there. We also have the option of hibiscus flowers for tannin. They bring a nice reddish purple kind of hue to your brew. A little bit goes a long way. And typically what you want to do is brew that as a tea and then add the tea not add the whole petals because you can get far too much tannin in your brew. Any Wallace is on the right train because we also have cacao nibs as a potential tannin option. Cacao nibs need to be roasted, so we'll have to roast those if you choose those. They need to be roasted before you can use them to bring out some of those rich chocolatey flavors. Uh, otherwise, they just kind of taste like bad chocolate. Rob has our straw pull up. Rob, you're a freaking champ. I owe you like a box of mead. Terry's chocolate orange hooch. Is that the, correct me if I'm wrong, but is that the, the chocolate oranges that you get around Christmas time that are like individually wrapped orange slices? If we get to, <laughs> if we get to 50 followers and you can help us get there, if we get to 50 followers, uh, we are going to break out the wild card box. The wild card box has some other ingredients in it. And they're ingredients that you, I don't remember what I put in here. <laughs> they're ingredients you may or may not want in this brew, quite honestly. Uh, yikes. So wild card would be our fourth uh, it's it's one of those things when you're brewing and you, you kind of get your balance just right and you say this needs just something something more something a little spicy maybe something a little herbal then you can go to your your adjuncts and pull out your wild card it looks like I'll give you another minute but it looks like cow nibs is gonna be where we're at so in preparation for that I'm gonna go ahead and get a pan heating up now I used, in a five gallon batch, I used one cup of toasted cacao nibs and it was enough to flavor the batch in just a few days. So I think we want to go a little bit light on the cacao nibs. I'm thinking we'll do a tablespoon. I don't know, I want, I want your thoughts. Throw your thoughts in the chat. I'm thinking a tablespoon, but I think what we might do is actually a half of a tablespoon. So basically, we will take a tablespoon of cacao nibs, put that right in, and then we'll just start keeping this moving. Sorry, I don't want to pay too little attention to these. Look at that smoke. I think we are done. What do you think about just doing the whole thing of rice syrup? About just under a pound of fermentable sugars. That should put us somewhere in the range of a beer, like a 5%, maybe 6% beer. That would give us a dry product. We'd probably go all the way dry with it, but I'm thinking that this might be good bottle conditioned. All of it, whole thing, don't do the least. And then what do you think about the orange marmalade? Do it all, do it all, add the whole jar. Got it. <laughs> Y'all are bold. I like it. Okay, so we have seven ounces of sugars. Seven ounces. Yeah, so this should put us in the range of like nine, 10% alcohol, I think. We can still bottle condition that if we want to. 
I see dog stick fetch donated 666. And I believe all caps means I have to yell, RAINING BLOOD FROM A LACERATED SKY. I hope I did that okay. And Paula, thank you for your $10 donation. So this is this is nerd stuff right here. So any of you brew nerds that are in the chat, you might help provide some context for these yeasts. A lot of uh, new brewers will will use bread yeast, and bread yeast does an okay job. It's unpredictable. It's poor flocculating. Flocculating is when your yeast drop out of suspension and form a nice cake of sludge at the bottom. A poor flocculating yeast, like bread yeast, doesn't form a hard yeast cake. So anytime you move or jostle, that stuff gets kicked back up. You know, I felt like wine yeast was was the way to go. Thank you, Super Ty. Science rules! Bill Nye, the science guy. Thank you for the $3 donation. So the yeasts that we have here, I will bring them up to the camera so that way you can see them. Maybe. We've got EC1118, which some people will call EC1118, others will call it Ecky Checky Boozy Woozy. It's a popular choice. We've got D47. It's cold outside, so D47 might be a good choice for some colder brewing. It does well at lower temperatures. Nice, clean, and crisp. We've got 71B. And also, just for fun, we've got some Premier Rouge. It's a red wine yeast, which initially I thought y'all were going to go with the, the strawberries, uh, the strawberry candy, so I was going to suggest we put a red wine yeast in there. <laughs> Ty, you're correct. Red Star is a great beginner yeast, and they're cheap. I think at my Bruce shop, they're like $1 a piece. So, solid. Love it. What don't I like about 71B? Uh, mostly, I think it's overrated. Uh, it seems to be one of those yeasts that unpredictable when it comes to either undershooting or overshooting its potential ABV. You know, yeast preference is really interesting because it's it's one of those things where it's it's real it's very personal. Like I love EC one 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 eight, and it's because it's the first yeast I ever used, and I know it gets a lot of hate here and there, but uh, if you treat it right, it does great things for you. You just, you got to treat it right and you got to give it the right nutrition and you got to keep it the right temperatures to keep it in check. I like to say a lot of times that home brewers, we're yeast wranglers. They're, they're our cattle and we're corralling them and getting them, getting them to do what we need to do and go where we need them to go. Oh my gosh, Flail Snail, thank you so much for the $25 donation. You're the real MVP, and I do like the idea, let me jump back over here, that Flail Snail should get to choose the ingredient because of the, the donation. So let's do that. Let's break this out. I'll give you a couple more minutes to vote in that straw poll on what yeast we're going to pitch into here. Flail Snail says I don't want to take that away. That's so kind. I, I'll, I'll let you concede that. Okay, let me, let me get the recipe off the screen for a minute so y'all can see. All right, I'm going to let y'all decide if Flail Snail is being peer pressured into this or if y'all are going to vote. Are you, you're saying call in Anna for the wild card? Anna does know the most. She does. All right, let's take a look at the ingredients in our wild card. First off, some dried basil. Basil and cacao, yeah, seems odd. Following that vein, we've got fresh sage. <laughs> so y'all don't like those choices yet. Thirdly, wintergreen. This is dried. It's a prominent aromatic in like birch beers and root beers. See, that I'm telling y'all, y'all did this to yourselves. Y'all pushed for this, and now this is where we're at. <laughs> Lemon balm, yes, wintergreen, no. Throw in some pepper extract. I don't have lemon balm, y'all. Sorry. Yeah? Okay. We have star anise. If you're not familiar with star anise, it's got a licorice-y kind of flavor to it. This is what a star anise looks like. It's a little spice. 
It looks like with nine votes in the lead, we're using D47 as our yeast. Wintergreen? Are you sure? See, I really thought y'all would go star anise. I really did. That, like a nice, rich, herbal, fennel kind of flavor seems like it would go really well with the orange marmalade. And we're only going to use a smidge, right? But what we need to do is turn it into a tea. So we will have to do that. Mm. I believe our winter green is well steeped. That is, that is minty. Taste it. It could probably go a little longer. How am I gonna get the marmalade in? I think I'm gonna warm it. So there's our recipe. Let's get our cacao nibs in there. Beautiful. So we're gonna use cheesecloth to strain this winter green out. I think that's probably our best, safest bet. Oh, oh, interesting. And our marmalade has started to rise up out of the container. So let's see if we can't get that to flow in here as well. And y'all said you wanted to use the whole thing. Oh yeah, we're gonna strain this through cheesecloth. Don't wanna forget that. So first off, I'm gonna make sure we get this nice and mixed up. I'm gonna sanitize my hands. We are going to pitch D47 yeast. Yeah, I'm gonna take a gravity reading my heart rate up too much. <laughs> I'm glad you've enjoyed this rub duck, Sue. It, it means a lot to me that people enjoy the nonsense that we come up with. 1.072? Yeah, 1.072. And that's in the range that with this yeast we can probably bottle condition this if we choose to on the other end of it. It'll be interesting to see how the cacao nibs come through since they're going to ride out all of primary fermentation. But I'm not going to lie, with this level of sugar that's in it, it tasted like, it tastes a lot like, I mean it tastes exactly like what it is. It tastes, it, there's a chocolatey note that's like delicately in the background right now, but on the forefront it's just butterscotch and orange. Paula mentions that Gravity's a bit high. Yeast may need help unless you pitch the whole pack. That was my plan all along. <laughs> Make sure we've got enough in there to create a gasket. And we started at 1.072. If y'all wanna follow along on our Instagram, it's at doing the most okay. I'll make sure to throw some updates about this in the story there so you can kind of follow along with the process. And then we'll be back probably the same time next week for episode one. So I'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your support of the channel. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being awesome. Enjoy your weekend. Please stay safe out there and happy brewing.